I recreated Flappy Bird in Rust, which is purely run by the in-game electricity system. I will show you all the steps I took to make this possible. For anybody that lived under a rock in 2013, this is Flappy Bird, a game everybody and their grandma were playing back then. All you did was tap on the screen to make the bird go up, and also avoid getting hit by these Nintendo copyright violations. It seems so simple, but still was the most downloaded game for weeks. Using Rust electricity to recreate this seems like a hard task at face value. After all, the system was designed to help you defend your base. To make it easier for us, we'll break it down into smaller bite-sized chunks. When we take a closer look at Flappy Bird, we see that it is mainly made out of the bird and the pipes. The bird goes up and down and the pipes move from right to left. Let's focus on the bird for now. To indicate the bird, we could use some ordinary lights, which definitely are good for frame rate, but look rather dull. Luckily, Rust has neon signs, on which you can put the actual sprite from the game. As they say, a, a bird on the neon sign is worth two on the light. To simulate the bird movement, we start out with a circuit that can increase and decrease the value. Just like a variable, and this variable will be the height of the bird. We hook this circuit up to multiple neon signs, so at value 1, the first neon sign is powered, and at value 2, the second one, and so on. With buttons to increase or decrease our variable, we can move the bird up and down. But that's not enough to simulate the real deal. We shouldn't have the ability to move down by ourselves. Instead of a down button, we hook it up to a game clock. Every time the clock ticks, the bird moves down by one. If the up button still moves only up by one, we can barely get any height, which isn't a fun experience. Instead we say each time we press the up button, the bird goes up by two spaces. And just like this, we gave the bird the ability to soar through the sky in a nice pattern. Our bird is done for now, so we move on to the pipes. The bird was easy to fit on one neon sign. The pipes however are much longer than our flapping friend. Therefore we will have to use multiple at once. But our pipe doesn't exactly look like the one in game. It just consists out of straight pieces without the ends. But we can get there. With the new neon signs there is a neat trick. We can draw three different pipe sprites on one single neon sign. Frame 1 is our bottom, frame 2 is our straight piece, and frame 3 is our top piece. With some electrical logic, we can create a circuit that will power the bottom sprite on the first neon and the straight sprite on every neon down below. This way we can choose any of the heights for our pipe and it will still show correctly. We can duplicate the same circuit for the top pipe. As a last measurement, we combine the upper and the lower one. This way there's only one input that automatically displays both the bottom and the top pipe correctly. The display of course isn't done with just one pipe column. Therefore we add six more. This is starting to look like the real deal. Well if only our pipes would be moving as well. But fear not my electric friend, the basic movement of these pipes can be achieved with a shift register. Every time we hit the switch, the light moves one over. Similar to the bird, not just up and down, but just to the left. And we can have multiple lights moving at the same time. We hook this circuit up to the pipes that we already have. Look at that, one pipe moving over to the left every time the button is pressed. Now I only need a button that turns unsubscribed watchers into subscribed ones. While you take care of that, I went ahead and hooked up the pipe movement to the clock. With that, the pipe will automatically move each clock cycle. We can manually insert a new one and have multiple moving. Splendid! One oddity you may notice is that the pipe always is the same height. That is because we only implemented the shift register for one height. As this wouldn't be much fun to play, we add shift registers to the other five possible heights as well. Now we can select any height we want the pipes to be at. The next step is to automate this process. It can be done with a random generator. 
This circuit will pick out any of the six heights every three clock cycles. Finally, we can have a go at the game. Until we had a pipe, is if we had implemented collision yet. But that's an easy fix. Just check if the bird and the pipe is on the same square, and if so, end the game. And that's how you kill one bird with two pipes. Additionally, the game will end if the bird is either too high or too low. The last addition needed is a score. How else should we tell how good a player is doing? So we add a counter and increase it every time a pipe passes the bird. In my other creations, I usually ramp up the difficulty by making it faster. But the original Flappy Bird also didn't get any faster. It was just very difficult from the get-go. So this time, the game is more focused on consistency. Therein lies the beauty of Flappy Bird. Though that beauty so far only extends conceptually, as it still looks like this. I guess it's time to touch up the visuals. I went for a similar aesthetic to the arcade games that I already had. First we add shipping container, spray them in the right color and add signs on top, as well as a platform with extra lights. From the available wallpapers this one worked perfectly with the game. At its peak Flappy Bird spawned up to 60 clones a day and today it just got another one. If you want to play Flappy Bird or any other arcade games that I've made, you can get them on my Patreon. And over here you can watch how I made even more games with rust electricity. Thanks to my Patreons for believing in me, and I see you in the next video. Splendid!